Grant Dania now. It's Grant Dania. The gold logie this year. Oh my god, it's Grant Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. Oh god, I'm not ready. We never <laughs> are. <laughs> But at least we're not pissed like George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that's rough. So I'm I'm doing this fitness challenge at the moment that comes with a diet mm-hmm. and not drinking as well. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Gee, your part voice of is this, husky? yeah, really husky. Oh. Why is it so husky? You know that morning kind of vibe. We could be recording this at one a.m. in the morning. You never yeah. know. It sounds like but... you didn't go to bed until well after one a.m. in the morning, young man. <laughs> So with this diet, it doesn't say you can't still go out and have fun. So I went out and had fun and, you know, was singing at the top of my lungs. And, yeah, maybe there's a bit of a voice just disappearing at the moment. Oh, hang on. So you you went out not drinking? No. I didn't drink. No, I'm all good. Did you really? Wow. I've done that before. I did that when I was young. I've been sober seven weeks now. Oh, my God. Mate, that's well done. I'm impressed. Give him a bloody Bloody cheers. cheers. Get that up here. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's that was a, good. Thank you. That's enormous. Um, how how what's it like going out on the town without drinking? Because I'm I've realised I'm a little bit socially awkward, <laughs> and I think I I feel like sometimes I I need that to kind of just to get in yeah. the zone. How about you? I think if you go out with the right people, it can be a really good time because you sort of know them well enough. You can poke fun at them when they are a little bit tipsy and whatnot. So you can have fun in that aspect. But if you're with a completely brand new group of people and they're just getting absolutely, you know, wild and you're just your usual old self, which is absolutely fine. um, Yeah. It can be a little bit, a little bit, hard to, to navigate. Are but pe- People yeah, just I, get annoying when when they're smashed and you're not? Oh, extremely annoying. And look, you've just got the great option to jump in the car and go home and have a sleep afterwards. So yeah. that's a, what a good option too. What are the benefits that you're noticing from it? I'm definitely not as bloated and having hangovers <laughs> every single weekend, which is great. And yeah. my skin's cleared up and I just feel more uh, energetic. I don't, I don't see him this morning, that's for sure. But um, no, I've, I've seen some really great um, benefits to, yeah. Oh, my bank balance as well. Yeah. It's, it's staying at a healthy level too. Because um, you can go out and spend hundreds of dollars yeah. uh, on a night out. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really effective. I haven't, like, weighed myself in yet to, um, you know, see the, the results. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I do that in about a week's time. So it'll be interesting to see what the um, what the results are. Well done, mate. I'm proud of you. Yeah, that's same. An, that's an enormous, enormous effort. Well done. Do you know who we should talk to one week on the podcast? Either Chrissy Swan. Oh, for not drinking. Or, oh, now her name, Maz Compton. I should not drink either. Yeah, Maz wrote um, a, uh, a book about it, I think, how she decided to stop for a month. And her whole life changed. Wow. Yeah, we should talk to them because... I don't know if I can handle you sober, to be honest. Um, darling, I... I think I need to drink in this relationship. (laughs) (laughs) That's highly rude. Um, (laughs) I have been sober lots of times when I've been extreme dieting over the years. One of your many pregnancies? One of my many pregnancies, yeah. Yeah. So how dare you say I'm not good. I'm just as crazy, but I don't slur as much. Yeah. But I'm getting sick of, I love red wine and you can hear it in my voice because I had some red wine last night. I get very nasally and really puffy in the eyes because I'm allergic to... The wine. The wine. <laughs> oh, is, but you just drink it really? anyway. Yeah. Yeah. The sulfur in the wine. What, I what makes me sick? Tolerate. Give me some more of that. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sensible. Okay. But that's, the, that's, that's you with coffee, thanks. Yeah, it is true. Throwing pot shots here. Bloody hell. No, but isn't it funny how we will, we will punish ourselves, even though we know it's not good for us. Yeah, I know. That, well, it's and stopping. we do it anyway. It's stopping. We're going to follow in George's footsteps. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Who's, who's this we? Well, I I <laughs> am. <laughs> I, no, I've kicked this idea around for a while. Like, yeah, yeah, we have. We even mentioned it on the podcast like two years ago. You're like, right, that's it. I'm gone sober. Yeah. Do you remember? I'm how, how, out of interest, and, and, you know, you don't have to answer, but, like, but how long did the sobriety go for? Because I, I know people who have gone sober for, yeah, like seven weeks or a few months and then they've got back onto it. Like, was it hard? Uh, I think the longest that I've ever gone without alcohol is a year and a half with none. It's big. Yeah. I reckon the first two weeks are hard. That, that, that is big. 
That is long. Yeah. Thank you. The first Do you two not weeks, remember I remember re- that. No. Uh, when was that? <laughs> I must have been too blind. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was after I was, I'd was. i done a lot of counselling and I was trying to, you know, to oh, yeah, um, yeah. recover myself from like post-traumatic stress and I just needed to really have my wits about me and also really focus on... We had a few years off the booze there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I reckon... <laughs> what? So... <laughs> I was waking up not happy with myself, uh, wondering where my Sunday mornings had gone when I decided to, you know what, time to get ship-shaped, Denya. Now, I, it, there is definitely, um, yeah, a benefit. I just find you that habit, like, because we don't drink every night. Um, we drink, maybe, you know, we try and sort of keep it to Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday night. Um, but you just, that habit, you just, you just, you, yeah. your, your body clock reaches the, the Friday and it, it's, it knows it's coming and it looks forward yep. to it and it wants the, the release and the, the decompression from it. Yeah. And that, that's quite a strong instinct to turn yeah. off. But I, mm. I found that after two weeks, it, it sort of, it normalizes and you know, you no longer really have to have, you no longer have that. Oh, I need it. I need it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I've replaced alcohol with, just simple water um and i've seen like huge benefits from drinking more water mm. uh, during this fitness challenge my skin's clearing up yeah um, that's i think good. better i've got more energy more clarity um but shower. this gym oh sorry you go it's a shower for your insides like it's it's yeah it's, like think of all your organs we are what percentage are we in in water 90 odd Percent water, so like <laughs> none of us know. We right? need a lot. I was Most say of the body, seventy something. But no, I think you're right. I think I, well, I started drinking this when I wasn't drinking alcohol at the start of the year, and I, I'm holding it up because I bloody so, love this apple stuff. Apple vinegar. Yeah, this is the ginger one. So, not sponsored. No, it's not. But Carolyn, who makes this, this young girl, um, sent us a whole heap of bottles because she. She saw that we were drinking it on the podcast and I bloody love it. I can't get enough. You know what worries me about alcohol is that it is a, it's a numbing agent, right? So it's, it's it dulling is. down my emotions, right? So what else is it doing to me? Is it, is it, it's, it's, I reckon it, it's affecting my motivation, your drive, your positivity. Yeah. Um, you just, your general outlook on life. And if we have the ability to manifest wonderful things in our lives, which I think we do, I think if you think positive and you, and you, and you focus on a goal, that goal becomes easier, right? If, if we're dulling all that down, then what, what are we start? What potential are we starving ourselves of? Exactly. You're lowering your vibration. Yeah. Um, on that point, it should have tasted good. So I had a, <laughs> I had my birth chart read by um, astrologer, uh, astrological astrologer, our favourite astrologer. astrologer. Thank you, um, Astro Tash. She did a proper birth chart reading for me, and part of that, she said that my, um, well, I'll play a little bit for you now. She said that part of my life's lesson during this lifetime was that I need to know that I'm highly spiritual, but I can't dull that at times. Ah, so maybe. And she said in past lives I would have, which is all, I'm piecing it together now. She said in past lives I may have reached for alcohol or, you know, or, or food or, or I don't know, anything to try and numb that, that um, dissatisfied spiritual feeling. But anyway, I'll, look, I've got a little bit here that I'll play for you. So this is um, Astro this is Tash. Astro Tash. Hopefully, I've lined it up properly because you were with me so when I did it. I imagine a so a birth chart reading is just doing all your numbers when you're she born, what time my, of day, month, your yeah, star sign, and it was so accurate. Not only accurate, it was phenomenal because she also spoke about what's coming up um, for the next year. She spoke about things that had happened during the past two years. You know, um, here at home. Uh, in our relationship, with the kids, with my parents, um, the loss of my girlfriend at the start of the year. Like this, she... Wow. It it was incredible how... So what's this bit about? Well, you were listening with me before. Mm. Yeah. Let's Mm -hmm. let's play it and see if it's the right part. (laughs) I'm ready. But also... um, you have the, the sun, and this is again time dependent. So, if this time is correct, the sun in the eighth house 
And there are some other placements here which kind of um, are, are causing me to, to bring this up. This is a very psychic chart. This is someone with psychic ability. And if not psychic ability, then highly, highly intuitive. Do you, is that, does that resonate with you? Like, All the you time. Feel? All the time. I, yeah, I say, oh, it's, this is going to happen. I don't know why. It's just, I just I know. I do, don't know. Yes, you do. I used to say, I, I feel it in my waters. I've, I have yeah. no idea where that's come from, but I used to joke and I would, yeah, predict things or, yeah. Well, that is, that's real. You definitely have this psychic ability. So the Whoa. huge bump uh, probably is correct. Did she so, say you have psycho ability? Is that what she said? <laughs> that's what I, because that's what I heard. I heard psycho ability. No, I, do you know what? And it, and she said things that um, was, it was really validating. That's the word I want to use. So things that I'd been feeling, you know, about changes in our, in, in our workplace or changes in our home or things that I've been feeling and I feel like, you know, we're on the precipice of a very mm, big change. Big breakthrough of some yeah, sort. Yeah, and she, yeah, she, um, she said all of that. It was great. It, w- it went for an hour and a half and um, she's going to do Grant later on. Um, did down she, the track, did and she and say that the reason why George is not drinking is because he's pregnant? <laughs> like, is did she? No, you might have cracked the case I there. Think that's what it really <laughs> is, isn't it, brother? But Chesy, if we sat down in a room and you just sort of had a, a conversation with me, do you reckon you'd have psychic abilities there and like be able to? almost map out what's coming up for me or is it more so a personal thing with your own family and friends and workplace? George, that is such a good question. For somebody who's had very li- limited sleep, I am really impressed with that question. <laughs> Someone Thank whose you. eyelids are barely cracked open. <laughs> I'm actually sleep talking right now. <laughs> oh, you're doing very well. Um, Thank you. No, I don't meet people and then think and like, you know, meet them and go, whoa, this person's going to have, you know, this happen to them. It's more a, I don't know, just, we, and, and I want to explore it more because I don't understand it. I've but, seen cir- circum- cir- certain circumstances. Circumcisions? Circumcisions <laughs> where you have, say someone comes to her with a situation that they are in and sometimes then she can dial in and she feels the outcome and that outcome is correct. But hold on, they don't come to me saying, can you foresee my no, future? No, 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 because but you'd be sitting there and having a chat with someone, right? Uh, and it's uh, often about, and I don't know why, it's often women who... I know who can't fall pregnant and then they kind of, you know, they, they tell me their story and then I'll go away or, and it happens a lot in dreams, which says to me that maybe, you know, I do have some kind of ability, but I'm, I don't know how to do it. You can, you, you, you know, you, you filter it out. Your, your practical brain filters it out while you're awake. So, yeah. so it happens when you're in your subconscious. Exactly. And so I'll wake up and I'll I'll have had this very clear dream that um that you know they they're having a baby and then I'll you know I'll tell them and then these are people who are struggling for years right yeah. not not just oh. and it's happened so many times yeah um, I've seen it so many times so that's kind of what you know w- yeah, I need to learn more about it maybe yeah. we can maybe you, we you can need to do that find on a them. spiritual school or something like yeah. where do you go where they teach witches. You know? I think there's actually a place. Um, what is it? Uh, Hogwarts, Harry Potter. <laughs> is there a witch department? Oh my in there? god! Yeah, you guys. Can you turn Dial me into in. a snake or something? Something cool. Get a broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. I don't I, even I have think... anything to say to that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Far, well, you, yeah. just, you, you paused and you made George feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that good. He joked. <laughs> Like you left him hanging. And also, I'm awake be- now. Also, <laughs> his heart rate just went up. Also, because we've got a guest today, and I've okay. somehow created a waiting room on this Zoom, um, and I can see that they're waiting in the waiting room. So we'll we'll let them in. Okay. We're learning yeah. along. Oh, well, you're going to drive it, are you? No, you, you drive it. No, you, you drive it. it. No, you, you drive it. You I've, created I've got it. Got to wipe my nose. Oh, okay. Right, right. We're gonna Sorry. probably don't need to broadcast that to everybody. But well, they can see it, can't they? Um. So admit we're we're. Learning along the way here. So when you this is it, promising. It's, yeah, it feels good. Hey, Glenn. Hey, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, you can hear us well. 
Yep, you can hear me. We can. We sh- good. We sure can, buddy. Great to have you with us. Look, we haven't done an intro yet for you, so no. if you don't mind, I'll just shoot from the hip right now. Um, about four years ago, uh, this gentleman reached out to me. Um, he was pioneering a brand new concept, which was called the Imperfectly Perfect Campaign, which was about revealing the truth behind how we are actually feeling rather than conveying our absolute best version of ourselves all the time, like we tend to do on social media. Um, He wanted to kind of be honest and have conversations that reveal and open up the cracks about um, our low points, the things that aren't going right in our life. And it's okay to feel that way and it's okay to have discussions around that and it's okay to show your vulnerability and I thought you know what I'm so sick of the plasticness of social media the fakeness the and I'm I'm guilty I'm obsessed with it as well and I'm part of the problem I liked how fresh this campaign is and it's great to have you on board mate to to talk about it today because it's gone global it is going absolutely sensationally, and I'm so happy for you, mate. So, congratulations. Give him a Thank applause. You. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. And can I just say, if, if it wasn't for you guys getting behind it, then um, who knows where it would have been. Well, so your, pa- I, I thank you. your passion is is pretty incredible, and it's also quite infectious. I mean, we we did a chat with you the other day for your podcast, and I thought to myself, God, we haven't even had you on our podcast. We did like, this is ridiculous because you are one of the most driven and passionate people that I've ever met, and and watching you're you know, relentless, yeah. <laughs> Um, I get that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way, like in a really good way, because you've you've cast the net and you've got so many celebrities involved and people from all walks of life in your campaign. Let's just go back to the basics. Why did you want to create it? It was a sense of exactly what you said, removing the mass. Like I lost a friend sadly to suicide. He was in the corporate sector. I was seeing highlight reels. And when I saw a picture of him and his son, it knocked me around for six because to see a friend who had a little boy the same age as mine at the time, to think that his partner would have had to sit down and say, daddy's not coming home, just broke me. Mm. And it was a sense of just watching that and listening and hearing people's stories and reaching out to organizations and understanding there's a lot of advocates who want to do things. And I was like, what can I do? And as you guys know, I do photography on the side as a, as a passion. And I was like, let's just get rid of the smoke and the mirrors. And when it comes to celebrities or public figures, everyone constructs this idea, this narrative that they know them from a persona that they see. And I was like, we need to deconstruct that and bring things back to basic. Yeah. And I commend you for it. Um, because the photos are stunning, um, they are. but they're they're quite raw and painful, and they're and they're people being photographed like you've never seen them before. And I I must admit, you know, for, I, for my for my job for a living, I have my photo taken. Right, it's, it's what I do. It's how I get paid. It pays the pays the mortgage. Um, but I've never been photographed like this. You know, I'm most of my shows are a high energy, positive, dial it up to eleven, high vibe uh, environment where you know. I do a lot of tap dancing, not actual tap dancing, but like that's. Well, you do try. That would be impressive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I jump, I jump around a lot for my for to to create a, an energy, so the show feels like it's got a certain buzz about it. So I've only ever been photoed, photographed with my with my smile turned right up, you, you know, in the same poses, doing the same thing. You know, I've never shown cracks. I've never shown, you know, we, we, I guess we have on this podcast, we've spoken about it, but I'd never up until that point in my career, I'd only ever tried to present myself as flawless. And flawless is boring and it's not real. And um, it's bullshit. And it's bullshit. And you've done a beautiful job of showing the other side of life with celebrities and that normalizes things so much and it's such a healthy thing to do. But how hard was it, Glenn? Be- how Because... A lot of these celebrities that you've photographed are vulnerable people. You know, they 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 want to maintain that persona because they want to keep working in the industry. Yeah, you think your profession relies on it. Your future career depends on, on you appearing to be flawless. 
Yeah, it was one of those things where I, I first started reaching out and I was getting a lot of no's because of that very thing. And there was somebody right at the beginning who said, look, I'd love to come on board. But again, with my career, it might stop any kind of progression. And I said, I understand, I respect, but that's the problem right there. Yeah. I said, everyone's living in this perpetual cycle of compete, compare, judge, thinking everyone's life is far better than theirs, which is going towards their mental health. I said, someone needs to break the mold. And it was actually Dan Ewing from Home and Away that oh, yeah, no, we reached yeah. out, we became good friends and we started talking about it. And he said, you know what? The same as you, Grant. It was like, I've portrayed this for such a long time and it's not the reality. And he started snowballing. And I must say, when I reached out to yourself and Cheryl, you were straight behind it. This guy, as I said the other day, that nobody knew, you took a chance on me because there was just this sincerity. I sent voice notes. I wanted to make a change. And I was like, everyone's, how did you get in touch with them? I was like, Instagram. Yeah. And they was like, really? I was like, you don't know what you don't know. And I always lead by humility because I, I really don't know where this has gone. I'm grateful for, but as I said, it's taken me to the brink to learn about mental health myself. I've emptied my pockets. I've been used. I've been manipulated, but I'm here today to go. It's made me who I am to make it stronger I'm very fortunate to have taken it to the world. But how do you maintain that drive when, as you said, it's nearly it's nearly sent you broke. You've you know you've been used and abused, and you've seen the other side. What does that mean, used and abused, mate? So I started to learn what it was like for a lot of people in the industry. So when people started seeing this platform growing, I was having organizations and everybody reaching out to me again, Glenn, can you connect me to Grant? Can you connect me to, can you connect me to? And it was almost like everyone's looking through me, over me or around me, but nobody wants to know Glenn. Yeah. And it got to a point where I didn't want to become cynical, but I was like, hold on a minute. Who wants to go for a beer with Glenn and just see how Glenn's doing? Mm. And I will say the late Mike Falzen, um, he came on the campaign and we became good friends. And he used to text me each week without fail, just going, but Glenn, how are you? Because you're taking everyone else's energy on. Mm. And that meant a lot. And when he passed away and Jane reached out and said, you know, you meant a lot to Michael. And she invited me to his funeral. And it was amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it got very hard at one point with all these organizations and then everyone coming at me because it blew up. And as I say, I lead by humility because everyone's like, is it a non-for-profit? Is it a for-profit? Is it this, that? And I'm like, whoa, back off. Like I jumped on construction to get by. I was up at 4 a.m. I was home. I was doing learning how to network, to do PR. I was reaching out to everybody and everyone's like, what is it? What are you doing? How are you doing it? And this, and I'm like, I'm actually just making awareness at the minute, just like back off. It's a passion project. And then it sort of spiraled after Grant and Rebecca Gibney got a load of press from it. Then America came on and then obviously more of a platform, bigger organizations. We'd love to collaborate. And I'm like, you know what? If you really believe in it, you can put a bit of money into it if you want as a sponsor or something. Mm. And then they disappear. So I was like, okay, I'm on my own. And I kept on trekking this journey and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and, I've just had to learn so much along the way and I'm grateful for it, but I will never say it's been easy. It's literally like I've lived what the message of IPC is <laughs> yeah. internal as well. It's run you through the ringer. What, what's oh, the, it has. What's it the has. potential? What's the, what's the end dream? So this is one of those things where I first, I got interviewed on the TV program and there was only several of you on it. And that was one of the questions. It was like, so what are you going to do now? Like, now you've shot these, have you finished? Are you going to do another campaign? And I was like, people have already ended it before <laughs> its potential of where it goes. I, and I said to him, I was like, there's so many different facets. There's industries that we've not touched. I don't want people to say it's merely a celebrity campaign. There's people within corporate, sports, the medical field, the scientific field, like Dr. Jody Spencer. I was like, it's about creating this continuous 365 days a year conversation but we've got resources and we're never going to be essentially until an organization decides to go you know what we're going to pour into this so we can have people on the phones manning because i once came across and i always say serendipitously this girl put a video on socials in the uk and she was crying her eyes out and she basically missed her bus to get to a mental health appointment by 10 minutes and because she was 10 minutes they told her she couldn't go in and see the doctor and she'd have to wait another two months for an appointment. 
Mm. For me, I was like, that's disturbing if we are pouring or the government's pouring a lot of money into this space, and that's the UK. So I started looking everywhere. And during the pandemic, I was like, you know what? I've built these foundations with celebrities. I've, I've become a lot of friends with the local. And, and I put on free events where I invited celebrities on to talk about their story. We did acoustic live sessions. We had Justin Guarini from American Idol sing songs. We had Eden Sassoon talk about business. And yeah, just the end game really is just to get the backing of an organization that truly wants to pour into it, that has seen the potential and the growth. Because if I can say, this is a guy that knew nobody, that learned every step of the way, jumped on construction, didn't know networking, didn't know PR, didn't know marketing, and look where it is by bringing people together. There's no team behind it. Believe in yourself. Yeah. Uh, what what keeps you going? To be honest with you, my kids, when I look at them, that when you've got a tear in your eye, Cheryl, when I told you about um, yeah. my friend's mother having to say that dad's not coming home, mm. just that. Yeah. It's, I, I just, I've been to the depth of despair six, seven years ago. It will have been longer now when I started the campaign with body dysmorphia. In the fitness industry, comparing myself to these highlights, living in Bondi, to the point it spiraled out of control and it nearly split my marriage up. And my wife was like, we're just not seeing you. Like you're consumed, so you need help. First time as a male, I broke down and cried in front of her, sought help. And I, I saw a general practitioner and I'm always like, please go and see somebody who's specialized because the general practitioner didn't really understand body mm. dysmorphia. So it was like the first time I opened up and, hey, what am I going to do now? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you were just um, consumed with your body and, and how you looked and it was never enough. And so you were just constantly, what, gymming or all the time? Yeah. I mean, body dysmorphia, for people who don't know, there's two ways. It's either you're obsessed by looking at perceived flaws or you can't stand looking at the mirror. You can't look at yourself. With me, I was on stage teaching fitness group fitness to about 100 odd people. On the external, you'd think, oh, he's extroverted. He's, he's got his life going on. He's happy. Even my wife did. And at one point, she thought I was a little bit narcissistic because I'd get home, take my top off, and I'd be looking in the mirror. What started out was two to three minutes after several months of my brain telling me, you've got this perceived flow, you've got this perceived flow, two or three hours in the mirror. Oh, oh wow. wow. Just picking, it consumes you. Just picking oh. yourself apart? Picking it apart. And I can look back at images now and go, my God, Glenn, what did you do to yourself? Because you had a six pack, you look fine. And so with that in mind, it was like, if your mind can take you that far down that way, mm. how far can it take you the other way to take something to the world? Yeah. Oh, God. Wow. Holy hell. Yeah. Give him a bloody applause. Oh, I need him, to oh, be closer applause. to the sound effects. You're hopeless. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I wanted to give him one from my actual... <laughs> Pressing of my own flesh. Oh, I, <laughs> oh that's really like. That's, yeah, incredible. I didn't know that aspect of your story. Um, wow, that's 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 quite that's that spun me out. Yeah, thank you for sharing because I like. Yeah, I know. Um, I know a lot of people who have struggled with body dysmorphia, but never a, a male. Um, and to that extent, and I'm sure that there is, you know, a lot. Um, because we all put these ridiculous. Um, expectations uh, and pressure on ourselves to look a certain way and as you said you know you were right in the thick of it in Bondi where everybody's very health conscious and and body conscious and you know and then working in the fitness industry how did you kind of climb your way out of that if you don't mind me asking well me yeah no I'm very open about it first and foremost when I started this campaign and everybody was like you're relentless. So that did come up quite a lot <laughs> and, uh, to make a change. And I went on um, Heather Maltman's radio show and she actually said to me, she said, so we understand that you lost a friend, but there's so much more to it, Glenn. What is there? Because like you don't stop, you're relentless. And I shared my story about body dysmorphia. And she said from that episode, the amount of men that stepped forward and just didn't know the name body dysmorphia. Mm. And then the industry that you guys are in, it's rife within there. And people started sharing it with me. Um, but for me, I did go and see a psychologist at one point. And as I say, keep on trying. Because one, I found a very big disconnection with. It was very mm -hmm. clinical. I sat there. They'd never experienced it themselves. And I was just like, I feel like I'm talking to a wall here. 
Yeah. And then I actually went to see somebody who referred me to a guy that told me about a personal trainer. Now, being in the fitness industry, I thought, you know what, I'm going to connect with this guy. So I did. And he had dealt with body dysmorphia himself, being in a bodybuilding around, surrounded. Um, and he got me through it. Cognitive behavioral therapy. And he actually, from my story, he was at uni and did his dissertation on body dysmorphia. Wow. Wow. So because it's a, a lot more circle. prevalent. It's a lot more prevalent than what we I'm looking at you now. So why are you looking at me? Because you walk past the mirror a lot. Oh, you don't Because I'm a there. handsome fucking devil and I love looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, oh, so I, I can't help it and the Denyers can't help it. I don't have a great it? love of my own body, to be honest. Like I think being short, um, you know, going growing up through high school, I hated the fact that I was short, you know, because that's and that's still all people talk talk to me about even today, you know, everyone I make a lot of height jokes because at least that's the only control I have over it is at least yeah. if I go first with a height joke, at least I've taken control of the situation. Um, and I've, I've kind of, I've, I've learned to be okay with it, but I've hated my body, you know, my entire life. And that's not a great way to live. You know, you've got to be, you know, now I kind of, I go, I go through my body and I do a check every now and then and I go, you know, thank you feet for, you know, helping me walk on this earth. Thank you legs for helping me stand up so I can, go about my day you know and i work through my body thank you you know shoulders for carrying the weight of the family you know thank you for my arms for giving me the ability to create you know and and eyes to see and appreciate life but i've had to i've had to tune that into my body because it it was nothing but i only it was nothing but disgust to be honest prior to that and now i've had to learn appreciation and you read that book remember that little book that um you had to do this thing for a couple of months where every day you would talk to yourself in the mirror and yeah. tell yourself, I love you. Remember you were doing Jesus, that was hard to start with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That was, that was like chewing cement to start with. Just looking at myself and saying, I love you. Was the, it was like the hardest thing in the world I've ever done. And I thought, yeah. well, how could it be that way? Why have I got to a point where I can't even look at myself and say, I love you? That's, you and know. at the start, you couldn't even look at yourself in no. in the eyes. No, he'd like it was that was very strange, wasn't it? And it was only through practice and a, and 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 so I realised, shit, I've got an issue here. I've got I'm, I'm perceiving myself really badly, really negatively. That's very damaging. And it was only through practice that I could try and rewire those neurons to to appreciate what I see and. Um, we got a young bloke here with us now, George. He's our producer on the show. So he's just, half asleep. Yeah, he's at a, he's <laughs> no, a big I'm night awake, on the dance floor. I'm awake now hearing you speak, Glenn. Your passion is infectious, man. Thank you, George. And nice to meet you. George is a cool dude. He's um, he's currently seven seven weeks sober, I think he said. Um, he's in, in a little fitness. He's just getting himself in shape. He went out last night, hit the dance floor, sang some songs, didn't drink. Um, you know, we're, he's only young. He's 21. We're very proud of him. We love having him on this program. He's going through a little fitness thing at the moment, aren't you, George? Yeah, I certainly am. I've been uh, with PTs. They they saw me and went, oh, gosh, this guy needs more than one PT. We'll give him three. <laughs> So I'm with them five days a week for the past seven weeks, one more week to go, diet, um, you know, alcohol's gone, all that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, look, I I certainly have that. um, I mean, hearing you speak about looking at yourself in the mirror, Grant, and saying I love you, I there's a mirror actually right here right now. I I could definitely not do that Mm. um, because I I look at myself and just – yeah, think so poorly of of most aspects um, of my body as well. Um, so, I guess how, how do, do you know, Glenn? How do we get to the point of being able to love ourselves in, in in a good way? You know. Yeah, I'd say first and foremost, there's a book that I was recommended by J.R. Hawkins called Surrender, and it literally is just surrendering to those imperfections that we actually think are wrong with us when they're not. The ego that we all hold, it's not in terms of, oh, we think we're good with confidence ego. It's this ego that holds us in these habitual patterns where we play out old narratives and we keep going round and round. And that's why we don't move forward. So this book, Surrender, it teaches you how to actually learn to unravel the process. And then I went down the route of personal development and then spiritual people came towards me, not grown up around church. I'm not religious, never would be. But ultimately, everyone was coming, spiritual people, gurus, then people talking about God and saying this thing was being led and doors were opening. And the more I actually started tapping in a little bit, 
the more things were coming to me and I was, it sounds weird for anyone listening and going, Oh, here we go. But I started getting words to my head and things like this. And I'm mm. like, now I'm going full on mode, but, um, no, we love no, this. We, we love, love, love I'm getting really understanding. It's really understanding that when we were younger, we're indoctrinated to so much societal pressure through everything. And we look at everything. And when I talk about this comparing, competing and judgment, I'm always saying the quickest way to remove judgment from anybody is to get to know them or hear the story. Because if you hear that, say Grant's where he is these days, we don't know what he went through to get there. If you understood what he had to go through, you'll be clapping the loudest at his success. But what do we do? We're in this ego. And when it comes to fitness, it's the same thing. We don't know anyone's story. And if you're with a PT and they're not talking to you about your feelings or your mental health, it's time to move to another PT because sometimes people in that industry think of aesthetics and results as mm. my business. It's a results driven. Whereas yeah. you want someone to refer you because they have made you. That cliche saying, people will forget what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. Mm. Mm. So if your PTs aren't making you feel that you've been seen, you've been heard and all these little insecurities you might be holding. Yeah. Maybe you need a few on. more, mate. Maybe you need five. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> yeah. five. But I, I, had, I had a PT um, before COVID, right? And um, yeah, it was very much a results driven kind of situation. And now that I've got my three PTs, um, they, you know, there's about five minutes before and five minutes after each session where we do talk about how is your day? How are you feeling? How's work going? All of that stuff, which I which I love more than the actual training, to be completely honest. The training's just a little a bonus on the side to to start looking better. Um, Glenn, between the four of us, we have all got a few podcasts on our hands. Who is the ultimate celebrity that you'd like to get involved with in Perfectly Perfect? And can we try and get this to happen for you? Ooh. Thank oh, you. Juicy, um, juicy. Gary nice. Vaynerchuk. Don't look at me, though, because I probably can't make it happen. It'd be more so cringe. <laughs> It, it, it's funny. I always say the same person and it's Gary Vaynerchuk. And the reason being was because I say my success with this is attributed to listening to one podcast of his. Didn't know who he was when I started this. And there was this guy very much in his T-shirt. He was unassuming. He was saying to all these people listening to him. I was like, it's got to be someone with all these people. Like they're just listening to every single thing. And he said, 1% of people will listen to what I'm saying and take action and implement everything. It won't be perfect. Mm. They'll just do it. He said 99% will be back the next year in the same seats, taking the same notes and asking the same questions. Mm. And for him, the day that I get him on my show will be a simple thank you. Oh, Who, who is this guy? So Gary, he's, he's uh, like a motivational speaker or something, is he? Or? So Gary Vaynerchuk, he, he might be known as Gary V. He's like ah. blew up all around the world. He's... Um, He's a businessman, but he started from nothing in his dad's wine company and took it to like 60 million. And now he is huge. Have oh, you reached out? Let's, let's. So you have, have you, have you tried and like unsuccessfully so far? Well, the funny thing is I actually tried and then I started looking at the people around him and his next in kin is Claude Silva. So reached out to Claude Silva and within a week she was on my podcast. So. There is that three degree separation. Ah, I'm just looking at uh, a picture Belarusian, of Belarusian American entrepreneur. Mm. He is the co-founder of the restaurant reserva restaurant reservation software company. Re I don't know why we're reading Wikipedia. We don't know why. We're <laughs> half the stuff on Wikipedia <laughs> about us. Well, good news, Glenn. We've untrue. got him on the line now. <laughs> yeah, Here he is. Gary <laughs> B. This is your life. Be incredible. Can you do a Belarusian American accent? Yeah, I don't know. Everything sounds no, that's the same Russian. for me. <laughs> that's not Belarusian. Yeah. I like your work. How, how how do you equate the size of the campaign at the moment? Do do you try like if you were to sort of give it a, a measure of of some sort? What would be that unit of measure as to how it's going? Well, the funny thing is, in terms of awareness, and we've actually we had somebody behind the scenes have a look at the reach and the impact, and we've impacted over eight million lives so far. And then when it comes to people, always look at it and think there's this huge organization because of the names and the grandeur mm. and. I always attest, I say, go to Glenn Marsden on Instagram because I, I'm so transparent, as in show pictures on the construction site when I'm there and this, that, and the other. Everything's been organic. So when it comes to the podcast, I didn't know anything about podcasts. So like I said the other day, I turned up with my laptop <laughs> and garage band and pressed record to these celebrities. And 
I saw some of the faces, but I never thought about it. And these days I look back and go, they must have been like, who is this guy? Like, where's the mics? Where's this? Where's that? But I got it. And now the podcast, like hundreds of thousands of um, downloads organically from people sharing it. And then I once heard about from Gary V. It was like, you need to build a community. I'm like, right, I will do. So call to action was through everything. And then built a database of like 30,000 people in this community and then got initiatives going where you'll see where I am imperfectly perfect on the hand. And it started gaining traction around the world and bringing it in. And then people was like, well, how was you doing that? And I said, look, I had to be resourceful. I've got a mortgage. I've got a wife and kids. Nobody's pouring into this thing because a lot of organizations are going, if you're not non for profit, we can't pour into it because we won't get a tax rebate back. And I'm like, come on, guys. Yeah. If you truly all they care want. about something, yeah, exactly. stop thinking about the bottom line. Um, and I, I'd start calling people out. So I knew I was getting a bit stronger in business and just go, okay, well, we're not collaborating because you're thinking about your bottom line. So I mm. need to keep this pure. And then, um, so I went to, and I don't know if I should, I should say this on the podcast, but th- there's a platform where you basically get 2000 contacts for free. So I had 10 accounts where I could put 10,000 emails on so I could keep in touch with all these people. And then I had to export the CSV file and then put another 10,000 on. And people like, how the bloody hell were you doing all this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, does, I just did it. I love this. I, I, I've got so many questions to ask you. This happens all the time. I, w- I want to go back to the, the spiritual thing and the, you know, I, so you. I, I feel like, you know, when you're on the right path and when you've kind of clicked onto your life's purpose, that it's almost like you get all these signs from the universe or from, you know, spiritual people, as you said, like, you know, kind of helping to guide you or to that, that that's kind of how you recognize that you're on the right path. Um, yeah. And I love that because we've sort of, we, we I don't know we what talk path we're bit. on. Yeah, but you, I don't know what path we're on, but we've had a few. <laughs> we met a guru, remember? We did we meet did, a guru, yep. an Indian guru. Um, and, you guru, know, things guru like G. that. Guruji and things like that, you know, I I really I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. So you just find you 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 started taking the steps and then you things know, you, just you were saying that you appear. met a guru and then you like you know spiritual people <laughs> started coming. Well, it's funny because I always say and I use this word a lot. Someone who's unassuming, who's not filtered with anything to do with spirituality or anything like that, which is why I make it clear, like. I wasn't brought up around it, didn't know anything about it, didn't think about it. And then through this campaign, what happened once was Jeremy Jackson, who was off Baywatch, who was Hobby Buchanan. I went to LA once because when I did photography, again, I I used the same resilience. I was like, how do I get my work seen and noticed? So I went over, started reaching out to some big names in, in Hollywood. And Jeremy Jackson was the first one. And he came and met me. And then he went on a podcast with some spiritual people once. And Eden Sassoon was there, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Vidal Sassoon's daughter, Justin Garini. And they all sat around and Jeremy started talking about Imperfectly Perfect. And she was like, what's that about? She was like, my tattoos, Imperfectly Perfect. And Justin Garini said, I always get that word in my head and I say it to my kids. And they said there was just this whole spiritual moment for them that they all got involved. And that's how it blew up in America. And it started growing. And then I was having all spiritual people reaching out going, Glenn, you do realize that this has been, this has been pushed. I was like, well, what does that mean? Mm, <laughs> I was like, yeah. what are you bloody hell are you talking about? And there was like, well, look at all these doors opening. Like you don't know anybody. You didn't know how to do this. And it's got bigger than anything else. Yeah. And then when Dr. Joe Dispenser got involved, like my wife, sometimes she doesn't watch TV much. And she'd be like, I I don't know who some of these people are. I'm like, okay, that's okay. And then when Dr. Jodie Spencer came on, she turned around, she was like, how the bloody hell did you get him on it? I said, (laughs) within one week. And then everyone was like, he has guest list, waiting list for his events of 9,000 people. So imagine how hard he is to get. And I got it confirmed by somebody. They literally reached out and there was, yeah, it's because you're on that right path and there's an energetic frequency that you're working at and it's truth. So, and it's surrendering. And so, what do you think? What do you think now about the world? What what force do you think is at play, and how do you think the the world works? What is what is there? What's what's? Oh, nice is, question. Is there Daniel. something, and what is it? <laughs> I'm still not philosophical, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What I've learned is, I think 
as you guys know, I lost a really good friend the other day, sudden heart attack out of the blue. And it was the first time I'd really been to a really close friend's funeral. And I sat there with a group of guys and we were all trying to hold these tears in. And that was the first thing, like, why are we trying to hold the tears in? And I heard everyone speak about him and about how much he didn't live a grand life. It was unassuming again, but he impacted everyone around him. He reached out every single day. And if he knew you was moving and you not heard from him for like three weeks, he'd turn up on your doorstep with a present. And I was sat there just in tears. And then when they carried him out and watching your friend go past you, and I was like, we have got this so wrong. Mm. We we are consumed with materialistic like wealth and everything. And I'm not saying that's wrong to not think about it, but we can't take it with us. And yeah. I think everything that I've learned through this campaign, and I've been in front of millionaires, I've been in front of you guys who are very well known in Australia and some of Hollywood's biggest names. And I've just learned that they've turned their pain now into a purpose. And the most successful they've come is because they've let go of that ego part of them. And now they attract it instead of trying to continuously, they just realize that fame doesn't make you happy. Mm. Money doesn't make you happy. And yeah, that's, that's where I am with everything now. Cause I was, I was looking at it and people said like, so if someone dropped a million dollars on you now, Glenn, would you be ready? And I'd be like, yeah, of course I would. And they was like, but would you know how to make it sustainable? Would you know how to do this, this, and this? I was like, oh, probably not. And they was like, well, do you think you're ready now? I was like, and the same with fame. So do you, are you ready to go viral? Oh, well, I could be if I was in that realm wanting to. And they said, what if you went viral for the wrong reasons? I said, oh my God. And it, it just all this thing. And now I just take each day at a time because as I say, organizations would reach out. And if it doesn't feel right energetically, and then I get... Um, networks and all these people reach out and I'm like you know what when I started this you mocked me you laughed at me you said you'll not be able to get in touch with these people I actually reached out to radio stations and networks see if they had any jobs because I, I found a knack for networking and PR and it was just like now you've got no experience so they were all looking through me mm. and now it's funny how they all reach out to me and they're like oh can you help us get this person on the show and all this and I was like no. That energetic thing's not there anymore. No so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Do you just say go get stuffed, or yeah. how do you no. <laughs> piss, off, <laughs> piss off, dickhead? No, because I'm just like yeah. I just I'm bigger than you. Now. I remember I'm Scorpio as well. Oh. <laughs> I Sting in the tail. Quick. Yeah. Oh god. That was the wrong sound effect. <laughs> George, we need two Scorpios. We need in the you room. to help move this desk on this side because this, <laughs> it's not working. Um, Look, people oh. don't come here for the quality of the production. Okay. Oh, I keep pulling my headphones. That's so. That's yeah. That's um. Oh, that would really annoy me. Yeah, I'm Scorpio too. Um, what in meeting all of these people? through all different walks of life and, you know, Australia and America, it, have you kind of learned that human beings um, mostly are scared of the same things, have the same worries, like, as, you know. No matter what they do or how big they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. It's that what I mentioned earlier, this, because we've all been societal expectations and what we're seeing through media a lot of the time and it's manipulated images into our head that we should be like this or mm. this we go into fear mode and we do compare our lives to others we find ourselves falling into it and looking going oh my god jane's going on holiday again or look at that they've got another deal and then you've got the competing oh i need to get one up on others because this and then judging going oh here they go again mm. If you can remove yourself from that, I just find you'll, you'll live a lot simpler life, which is like social media, I will never say is a bad thing because it's enabled me to reach more people to help with this. Mm. But it can be detrimental if you're sat there and it's affecting your mental health, thinking everybody's life is better because we don't know what someone else's story is. Mm. Comparison is the thief of joy. I don't know where that yeah. came from. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> that is a saying. And it's, look, it's, it's called the human race, right? That's what we are. We are, yep. we are literally... On yep. a fucking treadmill in a race. Mm. Yep. And and it feels like social media can turn that right up. You know what I mean? And it feels like we're, that treadmill now is running faster than it's ever run yeah. before. Yeah, like the story you were telling us about the TikTok um, boy, I mm. can't remember his name. Yeah. Taylor Holder. Taylor Holder. Yeah, can you like um, – What's yeah, sure. So he his team reached out to me and, and I'd, I'd looked and 
he wrote this incredible song called Human. And if you listen to the lyrics, it's about you see the mirrors, you see the highlights, but you don't see what's going on in here. And he blew up in this thing called Hype House. And like I said, I was too old. I didn't know what it was, so I had to research it. Do you know what and that is, And it's where these George? group of kids, <laughs> these group of kids, these TikTokers, they all live together, they film, and their views go out of control to billions. And they get this money and then paparazzi and... And then he went through cancel culture because somebody said something about him and then everybody started removing themselves. And he's, he's a person of faith. And he said, that's the only thing that got him through. He was like, because everybody just went boom. And I actually learned it through this campaign that if you're in the public eye and something comes out, those people that you think are friends suddenly will distance themselves because it might look bad on their image. Mm. And I was like, so everyone ran wow. away from him. He went mm. from being at the top of the, you know, at the, at the tip of the spear to now then yep. being completely abandoned by everyone. Yep. And wow. now he's obviously just building his career back up and he's got a new team and it's all about mental health and everyone's now coming around him because his success is going higher and higher. But even he said, I believe I had to go through that mm. to realize who was really there for me. Yeah. It's a big lesson. Well, we've had numerous shit written about us, really, haven't we? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, well, I was going to say. <laughs> to endless, <and> then, <laughs> endless amounts. <laughs> but like the first few, you know, bad headlines, you certainly do work out who your friends are. And we yeah. still do remember, um, you know, we who, still do who remember t- who reached out to yeah. us. That you Very know, few do. When you're in trouble, when, when you're going when through perceived. some sort of – you know, storm, you know, like even a fabricated storm or whatever, whatever it is, maybe shit's gone down, just people run from you and you just don't hear from anyone. And and very few ever, you know, I, I remember in the thick of probably the the worst headlines of, of, of my life, um, only one person ever sent me a text message to say, you know what? I just want you to remember, and they were a fellow race car driver. Um, you might, you better mention him now. Yeah, it was yeah. Paul, Paul Morris. His name is is a is a very well known Australian uh, race car um, a driver and, and team owner. And he sent me a text going, you know, just never forget, mate. You're a badass racer. I hope you're doing okay. Um, and it, and, and it, like my phone just was silent. Like no one, so no this one. Was like, if you out. can imagine waking up in. The- we woke up in the morning, didn't we? We woke up in the morning having absolutely no idea about, you know, anything. And then um, I think my mum picked up a magazine or something and we saw like, you know, this dreadful um, false headline saying that we'd been to rehab for, for drugs and, you know, that we had – like it was it, – it was just it was front cover stuff. It was front cover, and they'd had like photos of you know of Grant and I looking really, um, well, I never looked skinny, but looking really, um, you know, unhappy and awful, and and you know, and from God knows when they'd taken the photos and they'd kind of pieced it all together to make this big, you know, awful mm. looking story. And I, I was unwell at the time. I was absolutely exhausted. Like I was, I was. Very unwell. You had no zing in your jing. No, I had no zing in my jing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was I was running on I was below empty. I'd been running on adrenals for, for a for couple a of long years, time. basically. And I mean, it was pretty crook. And so to wake up and have that, and then we're thinking, what? hang on a second, how can somebody just print something like that? But they haven't even come to us and asked if it was true. Yeah. Like. And so that's when the phone went silent and then, you know, that's when um, he reached out and said that to you, which was the start of something. And then, and then you know, we spoke to all our friends and um, – but people do run from you. So – Whether it's they don't know what to say or well, – I think they're scared. They're scared or – some of it is that some – professionally a lot of people were like i just don't want to be associated with that i don't want to be anywhere near that i don't want any of that sticking on me um so they just <laughs> they just bloody disappear in your life and you'll have one or two That's you know larry emda was one that reached out as well and, and was like you know just checking in on your buddy you know you know you'll get through this it's okay it'll all it'll all it'll all calm down yeah um, but, but i saw a side of fear as well that when i started in construction to do all this like i'm not known and i, I was in it and i was like wow, I'm earning some really good money and enjoying it, keeping fit whilst I'm doing it. And because I was meeting a lot of public figures, and I know within that industry I've learned so much that people don't realise when you're not working, you're not getting paid, and if Mm. you can't get paid, you don't get a publicist, you don't get in the events, and it's 
a lot mentally. So I would say to a couple of people, I'd be like, go and jump on construction. I was like, you can work these hours, you can go to your auditions and you're getting paid this much. And there was a couple of people I always remember going, yeah, I can't. I was like, why? I was like, well, if the papers pick up on it and say like my career's over and now I'm working in construction. Oh. And there was one girl that I said to, Kirsty McKenzie, and she she did modeling. And she went to be one of those, what do they call them? Traffic controllers. Oh, yeah. Oh, lollipop, yes. lollipop. Yeah. And she still does it to this day, bless her. And she stands there and I said, nobody's paying your bills. If you've got a family and all this and you're not working and you need... And she'll stand there and she'll put pictures on like this model that's known as catwalks and she's got her specs on and a helmet on. <laughs> that's and she's awesome. Like, Best piece of advice, Glenn. Because they're but, paid a fortune as well. It's such a high Exactly. Pot. People don't realise that. I know. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I need to get into, I'd be terrible in construction. I'd be like. You could do lollip or oh, I'd be actually, like, no. mix, mix, mix this concrete, mix <laughs> no. this. I don't know what the mix is. I haven't read the instructions. Just pour it in. Psh, I'd I cover myself in concrete. Just imagine you being on a high-rise building 50 floors up and just your hat oh. would just fall off and just no, land on like, someone down on the street. I'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no. <laughs> My wheelbarrow. You want, <laughs> you want to know where I get the resilience from? When I first started in construction building this, I had to stand there with this German guy and they give labourers the crappiest jobs in my mid thirties and I'm like, Oh, what is my life? And I was stood there and there was machines cutting into the debris, silica just going everywhere. I had to stand for 12 hours, hosing a bloody wall. Oh, oh. No. For three months, for three months. What? Do you want to know where resilience comes oh, from? Wow. There. And I was like, I'm married. I've got kids. I've got mortgage. I'm doing that. You know what? I'm doing it for the greater good. I'm building this, building my dreams to help other people and all this. And I was like, Standing old in a bloody hose for... Did you start? Yeah. Can I just ask, because I'm picturing what I would be doing, and I don't have a penis, but I, I would be... <laughs> I'd be, like, Thank drawing God. my name, like, with the hose. Did yeah. you ever do that in the three months? We did after a while. We got, yeah, yeah. 12 hours you stood there with a the hose, <laughs> like, looking at a wall, and it's like, what did you do? I was like, well, you know what? I, I was thinking about how I can get to these people and writing press releases and listening to what... Karen Ledbury and Jacinda Tynan yeah. give me great advice on press. They really helped me formulate how to learn how to speak to people in kind of um, producers and everything. So thankful to them guys. But yeah, I did it in my head whilst I was, <laughs> whilst I was stood there. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that is so good. It's just a lot of thinking time. Um, that's brilliant. Oh, we, my God. We could talk to you all day. We, we, thank you. Yeah, we, we've just had our do not disturb come off, which means... We're run, we're running out of time. The um the campaign is sensational, mate. Um, we're I'm so lucky that you you reached out in the early days, and um, I don't know why I, I I said yes. I just felt the need to, um, and it was a quick shoot, and you and, you, and it was effortless, and I, I was at, I was at a racetrack. I was at East, Eastern Creek Raceway. It was just at the back of the pits, um, and you helped me tap into something that I had been avoiding, I think, for a long time as well, and that's starting to look a little bit more inward and accepting wow. flaws and, and mistakes and errors and 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 learning how to um, sit in that and work through those issues. So it was it was the start of an awakening for me, mate. So thank you for, for getting me on. Thank you for pestering me so much that I had to say yes. <laughs> and I'm you so... know, I look back now and I think maybe it was meant to be then, like we're talking about spiritual, yeah, like because yes. what you did for the campaign, both of you, when you came on Grant, that image – the amount of messages and people saying it was saving lives because they've read from someone they recognize, like mm. you're on the screens nearly every week and people watch you, trust you. And for you to share that vulnerability, it made such a difference. So if something bigger than us was using that point to make us meet, to, to do it, look at where it's gone to. And that's down to you guys as well. So thank you. Proud of you, mate. Well done. Yay. Love you to thank chat, you my friend. Much. You take well, care. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Cheers, for having Glenn. Guys. Bye. Oh. I reckon that when we watch this episode back, we're going to have a thousand orbs come through. Don't yeah, you I reckon? think you might be right. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I actually saw a couple behind you guys too. Did I refrained you? because it's just a, a regular thing. But um, yeah, I saw a couple of orbs behind you. What we need to wow. get. Who's... One just one just went down between you two just then. Wow, get out. It was like near that back shelf. That's amazing. Unreal. Yeah. You can see this on the YouTube channel, guys. How cool, how cool is his sacrifice? Just going, I think oh, this needs to be God. done and I think I'm going to do it. 
I never knew about his personal, you know, no, his I personal didn't. story either. And um, yeah, he he is an incredible guy. Does it make you? Do you reckon it, what we just heard will make you look differently at your fitness journey? Oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah. I, I think as well. What I was thinking. You know, when I got you, GD, into my studio for the first time when I was doing my own little podcast, yeah, what he is doing is is that, but on a, a, a bigger level. You know, he's getting people that um, we all see in the media that we we trust yeah. and we're entertained by, and they're taking away that that film. Um, that layer, and we're recognizing a brand new layer um, that is even more relatable and more um, entertaining and enjoyable to to witness. So, yeah, I, th- I think it's it's an awesome campaign, and I wish him all the success. To yeah. be completely honest, I think it's a a marvelous idea. I think so. I feel I feel like I've been part of the problem, part of the machine that perpetuates this need to be positive, need to be. Hey, everything's fantastic. Yoo-hoo! Look at me. Uh, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've, yeah, I felt like I needed a responsibility to myself, but also to just everyone else to go, hey, man, that's not real life. You know, look, he, and we just sort of open ourselves up on this podcast and go, look, let's just have a look inside, <laughs> dig around, because like, it's, it's life, life ain't that. Life ain't perfect. Um, yeah. I think it's cool as well, though, that, you can be a performer, but then also show your real side. So say TV is where you can, you know, put those skills to practice, but you come to the podcast or you come to real everyday life conversations with your mates and you yeah. can just be you. But you couldn't like, I think do that's that cool. in the past. No, like, you couldn't. You could, if, if we had done what we are doing now, say five, definitely ten years ago, you wouldn't, you'd be unemployable. Like the things that we have declared in this podcast would make networks, and I know this because networks have run away from me in the past. When whenever we've gone through something vulnerable, or um, you know, we've we've been open about you know things that have gone wrong or, or struggles, th- they are allergic to that. They want people well, who are reliable and yeah. in their eyes and are flawless because flawless equals no issues, right? Because they're trying to sell something to the public, so that they are worried that if their person leading that show is making a mistake or is opening too much and sharing too much, well, then that can risk the success of that product, right? Mm. So they would never employ you. So you had to be perfect. You had to be flawless, and that's why it's like I think it's great what, what people like Glenn and yourself with your podcast showing the other side because that's important. Because otherwise, we all think we're all stuck in that comparison mode and that is the un- most unhealthy state of them all yeah because you'll never be happy and social media is i mean i know that it's worked well for glenn because that's how he reached out to us but if you spend a lot of time looking at social media the majority of things that you'll be looking at is everybody's highlights reel mm. and it's you know the best parts of their life and i, I said it the other day in the podcast i'd always try to be real but then sometimes, you know, you you either you're fit, not feeling that great, or you've had a rough week, or you you know you you're worried about something. So you want and to perpetuate you, a better version of yourself. Yeah, so you and sort I'm of, you amplify it. Yeah, mm. um, you know, or like I've had my hair done, or you know, had my makeup done, and I'm like, oh wow, I feel you yeah. know good. I want to take a photo of this. Oh, and just adjust that photo just a little bit so I look a little bit better. Yeah, you start creeping that stuff in. Um, but have you heard of um, the new social media for good? I guess it's I don't know what it's like. It's like TikTok. It's like We Are Eight. We Are Eight. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I, I just saw we ads are for eight. it. Yeah, I've. I've I, I, I it's got the girl from the Wiggles and um, Adam Goods and. Uh, so I think is it? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a social media platform that only focuses on positivity or it's, um, it's like a hate free zone and it's what are, let's look it up is it eight with like the number eight yeah yeah we yeah. are eight join a, the goodness the people's a platform. social media app that inspires you is good for the planet free from hate puts money in your wallet and oh, accept cookies um 
It's all good. They give you own. cookies too? What? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> and celebrates the good in life in just eight minutes a day. All right, so they must they must serve serve whatever it is that they're serving up in eight minutes. So it's condensed and so it's like snack form, but it's all positive stuff. And I think so. I, you get paid. You yes. get paid for watching certain uh, things on social media, and you can nominate that payment to yeah. You can uh, pay it to different causes, yeah. or you can keep it yourself. Different, yeah. So hmm. you can fund different charities or organizations or. Yeah, there's different environmental um, campaigns. There's different impact Gee, areas, climate, so poverty. So I think you're rewarded quality. for watching the stuff on there. You're paid for it. Well, that sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's an all a positive environment and all that those payments can then yeah, go on to do wonderful great things in, around the globe. We are 8 was founded by Australian born London-based tech entrepreneur Sue Fennessy spent the last 30 years creating disruptive businesses in digital economy. Um, Our journey was, was born out of Sue's desire to address the negative societal impact social media <coughs> had created across the world and will and wants to revolutionise the $450 billion digital advertising market by addressing the lack of effectiveness, transparency, waste. Well, we, should, we should try and chat to her. So yeah, it sounds pretty uh, revolutionary. Yeah, we'll try and get her on um, to let us know because that is so one thing. the vision is to be the social media platform that celebrates and champions good in life. Unite I love people, that. Unite, it wants to unite people to save the planet, to inspire, empower and enable people to join the goodness and collectivity to overcome the world's biggest problems in eight minutes a day. Yeah, right. I like so eight. It's snack form content. The number eight is the Chinese um, it's number of it, infinity. Yeah, it's the infinite flow of energy. Yeah, the symbol eight because it yeah. just loops. And itself. eight is actually my lucky number according to Astro Tash. So, true. Yeah, there could be something in this. I do like, I do like the idea of changing the way that social media, you know, works in the world because I do think that some of the big companies that you know are out there at the moment, not to name any. Um, you know, kind of wash their hands of, of responsibility. responsibility. Yeah, mm. and I know myself in trying to get a couple of – I don't know. Did we talk about this on the podcast? No, or? we didn't. We talked about it over a couple of beers with someone. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Same, same, really. Yeah. Um, I Just minus the beers. Um, yeah, we had a thing with, um, with some fake um, – Accounts that were uh, – some fake profiles that were – they're, they're posing as me and they were trying to extort money from people. Not extort money, they were trying to trick people they into was, giving them yeah, money. Yeah, they, were, they had mm. all these um, fake uh, newspaper articles and fake magazine articles with Grant's um, face and, and saying that, you know, Grant had come out finally and spoken about his love of um, medicinal cannabis tablets or something. Yeah. Um, and so I... All of it was fake. The quotes were fake. And then even at the end of the post, it had um, lots of different reviews from people and they were all fake. So I mm. complained to this media, um, social media organisation, uh, and I had to open up a thing with a tribunal and it all went, you know, they basically said, no, we can't do anything because it's run through a separate site. Um and you go, mate, this is your platform. Yeah. You can't profit from your platform. You can't take all the money and have no responsibility. Like mm. that's what shits me about all these joints. It's clearly not me. They know it's not me. You can tell it's not me. But what and was it's up- extorting people from money and not yeah. delivering them a product. You go, just shut the thing down. So and they like, were targeting oh, we pe- they were targeting people who were in pain, which really upset me because mm. I was getting all these messages from people saying that they had seen these these posts and these articles so they'd signed up because grant said that it really helped him with his back pain um and so they'd given their credit card details and then they get charged every three months but they don't get any products yeah like and there was no power and so anyway after i complained several times and i tried to even go through you know the um the Australian ombudsman or whatever the office was, um, they then changed the product to be nasal spray for impotence, but it was the same articles with just different quotes. 
um, but all the same reviews. It's just they're fast moving. They and are they do fast it to everyone. moving. Like they've done it to Koshi. They've done it to. I saw yesterday Chrissy know, Swan. Doctor like Phil, Chrissy Swan. A new Swan. diet pill, and it's all fake. I've got one for me with sex toys. It's yeah. just getting out of <laughs> hand. That one's actually real, and you, oh. you wrote those quotes because I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I, uh, there's a little short oh. cast interview that I even did for them. That's right. It's at the bottom of the page. Oh, you know what? I just hey, what happens, bro, when you are no longer chubby but would make a good hubby, as you termed your yourself on your um on your uh, mm. platform of your fit Tinder, Tinder and platform. you like a I'm good what lick. did you have to change it to well what oh, some what did you just say you're fit and you like a good lick i don't know far out right. whoa whoa i'm trying to think Shazzy. of something that rhymed with fit well, lick doesn't <laughs> it's I'm slim but would make a good hubby i guess <laughs> really boring <laughs> Oh, Not dude. as good. But, hey, speaking of the gym, just before we sign off, guys, I have loved go, the gym for many Before you go reasons. back to your your five personal trainers. <laughs> <laughs> that is excessive. I have enjoyed the gym because I'm seeing results. I am eating better. I feel better. And, and I'm getting compliments from people at work saying, oh, man, you look slim. You look good. You look healthy. Um, I got off the treadmill the other night. Did about 40 minutes on it straight. Whoa! I was very, very proud. Well, that's a big, and big jog. Huge jog, huge jog. But I was in not my finest form afterwards, you know, sweaty, um, like big. this pale, <laughs> just red hair. I'm still a little bit chubby. Like I'm not the ultimate, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not ultimately there in my eyes, right? Yep. But I go to the the foyer of the gym. I'm about to sign out and go to my car and go home and sleep and whatever. And there's a, a lovely young lady there and she says, you're a bit of a dilf. <laughs> <laughs> a dilf? What's it? Is that dad I'd like to yeah. fidget? Well, that's yeah. it. I think it's more commonly yeah known as dad I'd like to F. Yeah. But I'm thinking, well, one, oh my God. I'm not a dad. Yeah. That's kind so of So is it dude well. I'd like to oh. F? Oh, maybe she's got the term wrong. Maybe, yeah. Maybe she thinks it's dude I'd like to F. What, maybe was, she hold on, thinks... what was your reaction? What did you say? Because you're clearly not old oh. enough to be a dad. No. No, I was t- I was chuffed. I'm like, oh, yeah, absolutely. That's right, That's right, honey. I'm going to go and uh, yeah, go and feed the kids <laughs> as I go home right now. Uh, maybe it means How old was she? doodle I like to fudge. No, maybe doodle I'd like to fondle. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. There, you there we go. go. She was she was mid twenty, mid to mid to late twenties. So I'm going to say older than um, you. Yeah, older than me. But she thought I was a daddy, puppy. So she just came up point blank and just dropped that bomb on you. Yeah. Wow. Were you sure yeah. you weren't That's hallucinating good. after like the gym? Oh, very likely <laughs> after a forty minute treadmill no, run. No oxygen left in your brain. She was like, "Do you want a towel?" And you're like, "Well, that's forward." I think she wants oh. to bonk me. <laughs> Thank you. I'd love to <laughs> jump on in. Let's no, go. No, what did so, you, yeah, anyway, I get did, called Dilf, Dilf these days. What did you say to her? What was your reaction? Show us your facials. Oh, like I'm holding my towel. i got my Nike gym bag. Oh, well, that does look I'm very dad-like. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Enjoy your session. Oh my god, you're <laughs> so cute. Oh, That's what funny. the heck just happened? So <laughs> anyway, I'm a Delph, guys. Look, um, the fa- she's she's tried to give you a compliment, so just take that. Don't, don't well, read too much. Like, she might have oh, fumbled well, it. Maybe she was nervous and she said fumbled it. Yeah, that does happen. But I didn't want to say like, oh, well, I reckon you're a milf. You know, like that's yeah. just sort of weird. Imagine she that slapped you. Weird. She goes, she would have. <laughs> <laughs> but you, hey, you, but you just called me a Delph. I think next week when you're at the gym and you see her, you should just go up and just start talking. Yeah, just say, Daddy's here. Oh, no, that is gross. <laughs> Puppy. No, if you just go up and just say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having my hearing checked this week. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you call me a DILF? And, and then, then get her to explain what she thinks DILF is just in case there's some confusion because maybe it is dude. She might have it an accent. Be. She might have an accent and be like, oh, you're the milk. What? <laughs> <laughs> you want a milk? Yeah, because everyone loves a milk after treadmill. a 40-minute session on a treadmill. exactly what it's I want. It's so like. rehydrating, this beautiful milk on a hot day. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Good on you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, quiz her, mate. Hit her up. Find out what she meant. Oh, Keep the convo going. She's initiated and now there's no turning back. Yeah. That's it. I feel yep, good things. I'll continue. 
Um, we had some reviews and, and oh, I feel like we need to, can we just run a review? Next time. I, oh, okay. Next time. Goodbye, Australia. We love you so much. <laughs> Don't stop sending those reviews in even though I'm not reading them. We love them. Oh. I will bash a few out for you in the next episode. But that was a really good chat. I enjoyed it, gang. Well it done. Was. Bye. Love you. Be true. Love you guys. Be true. See you, you hot dilf. Oh. Oh, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> it's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye bye. See you next time.